What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video in our Tag Mixer plugin series. Uh, I changed my audio a little bit. I noticed that my last videos were extra, super duper, like church mouse quiet. And I think it, I got that fixed, hopefully, sorted out here. Uh, beyond that, if you want me to take these headphones off, beyond that, here's what we're going to do. Uh, sorry for that loud noise with the headphones. Uh, we're actually going to continue right along in our series here. In fact, I'm going to jump right in on this one because there's a lot to cover in here. Uh, we're going to be doing in this video some JavaScript. I know. <sighs> Don't be afraid. I promise it's not going to be that big of a deal. We actually need to add uh, some stuff to make it so that a word can we can change the words in a page uh, when a user determines a spot for words to be changed. This is going to be extremely uh, beneficial for advertising. Let's head right back to our tag mixer. I'm going to show you. We have a package currently set that we did in our last video. We only have one package currently in the database, so we can drop that down. We don't have to drop anything down, actually. And then let's take a look. All right, so we have some rules set in here. I'm going to get rid of all, every single rule we got right now, except for this 50-pixel rule. I want to keep that one in. Let's go ahead and save that. And I'm going to show you why we're going to get right into editing here. I just want to have this nice and clear so that we can check it out. And I can show you. All right, here is our headline. Oh, it's not back yet. I figured it would load. There it is. Okay, here's our test headline. Now here's the thing, we're going to do a JavaScript replacement function when the user selects replace word right here with another word. Okay, so this is going to be its own video, and it is. Here we are. Uh, we want them to be able to replace a word they choose with another word, and uh, it's going to be a little different than you're expecting probably because I'm looking at it from an advertiser's perspective versus just like a plain English perspective. Uh, what I mean is... Um, you can make an advertising page and put in lots of unique words, like extremely unique words that would never come up naturally in code or anything. That would be your replacement words for um, your advertising stuff. Uh, pretty simple, pretty easy. I'll show you what that sounds like right now. Also, sorry for my uh, rickety wooden chair, right? Things like kindling at this point. And so here's the thing. Uh, when we create a JavaScript function that goes in and changes all of the interior words in a page, we're going to be using an inner HTML, which is kind of frowned upon, but the reason I'm using it is because I want to replace everything, header, footer, everything. I don't want to have to identify it or make the user choose. Maybe in a future video I could do that where the user chooses like a paragraph, header, article, whatever. But in this video, we're just going to go site-wide. I mean, it's going to change everything. If you are referencing a file, say a CSS file, and it's got that word in it, it's going to mess up that reference. Okay? This replaces every single word inside the body of an HTML document. So you need to be very careful about the words you're replacing and how you do this. Okay? And I'm gonna, we're going to show up right now. So let's open up the Projecto and go to the admin folder, the partials. We're working on the fun page, the Tag Mixer Packages page. Just drop that back out. All right. Starting from the top now, what's going to happen is, I still like this text is big, but that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by doing a couple of things uh, that we need to change in order for the user to know what's being done. And what I mean is like this. When we're changing font size, it says the idea of the element to modify and the value to change to. Well, in this, we're going to be replacing a word with another word. So that doesn't really make sense to the normal user, right? They're not modifying an idea of an element, and, and uh, they're, but they are going to change it to new value. So what we need to do is let the user know when they select this item. We need to give them a new prompt of what to do here because it's still going to use both of these boxes for the word and the replacement, but the um, label doesn't make any sense. So let's go back and start right there. If we go down to the label for that item... It's where the options are for the database right here. And it says ID of element to modify. Well, we only have a four item on this label. We're going to go ahead and give this an ID. So we can actually change this when the user selects a different item from the dropdown. We don't have that program in yet. Don't worry about that. So what we need to do, in order to make sense here, all we have to do is add an ID to this. And I think let's go ahead and just call it something like maybe like element ID or, or something like, yeah, I'm, I'm, that sounds fine. Okay, so now that can be modified because it has an ID. JavaScript can call to it and edit what its inner text is or text content. We talked about that in a previous video. You can see that if you go back. Okay, so that's really all we need here. Uh, also, we're going to be adding an on change event to this select here uh, in order to call that, but we'll come back and add that in a minute. So let's just scroll, scroll, and scroll, and scroll, and back up to our JavaScript. All right, right here, where we're calling to this add the item. We're going to do a little bit of uh, dancing in here because we're going to go ahead and add another else if statement. I know it's like, God, another one. But, you know, we got a lot of items to deal with. So, else if, nope, not a VB-based one. There we go. Okay. So now we have another else if, and we're going to say if e dot value equals. And then remember that what the, the box said was replace words with another word. So, just like that. And actually, you know what? 
remember when I said you could just copy? You can, to make sure you get this absolutely right, you can always scroll down to that option, select the physical option that you're trying to read, and then go back up. And now you have it exactly as it was typed. So that way you don't have any misspellings. So this stuff is case sensitive, remember I said that. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and say something like, uh, change all designated words in the page uh, to another word, dang it, another word the user specified. Perfect, that's it, that's all we care about. All right, awesome, we're off to the races. So in order to do this, it's really similar to what we do above every single time we do the document and we get the element and all that stuff. So we can actually copy the first part of this. This is from any of them that grabs the package settings and makes it equal itself so it doesn't overwrite what's in it. Remember, we talked about this early as well. So it's getting this text here saying, get the idea of the package settings that value equals itself and a new line. That means it's not going to erase what's in here. It's going to take what's in here and add a new line. So it adds the new rule underneath. It doesn't erase what's in that box. Okay, now we're ready to append to this because we have that new line. So it's a space and a plus and another space. And so what we're actually going to do here is after the new line, we're actually going to do something a little bit different. We're going to say document dot body dot inner HTML. Now this is going to establish looking at the to total uh, HTML, the entire page. It's going to search the entire HTML of the page and do the replacement. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to say inner HTML equals document dot body dot inner HTML. I know it's referencing itself right here, okay? It's saying I want the body's inner HTML to equal the body's inner HTML, and I want to replace. Okay, and this is a J uh, JavaScript replace. It, it searches a string and replaces all instances of the found string. All right, so here's what's going to happen here. We're going to open this just like that. And then we're going to do that over here. Actually, let's not confuse ourselves. Let's just start right there. That's fine. Okay. And we're going to do some pluses and some stuff like that. Actually, you know what? Let's just do this. Let's just go back to right there. Sorry, it's not confusing. Okay, so if you see it, inside there, it's now opening a first word to be replaced inside of that replace function. So if we do a space now, now we can grab the element of ID to change. I'm going to try to be really slow about this because I know this is going to get confusing really fast. But basically, that's whatever the user has put into this box. Now, in this case, in a second, we're going to make it change this text to say word you'd like to change. So they're going to be able to know that that's what they need to put there. And that's what we're referencing by getting this um, item's value. Okay, now we're going to open up and we're going to close that first one. You have to use a single quote, remember, because it's using it's actually outputting the single quotes. And then we're going to open another single quote. And we're going to get the new value that they're trying to replace to. That's the box below. And I will try to cover this. I know this is a lot to cover in 10 minutes, so I'm, I'm fully understanding of that. But now it's grabbing this value and putting it in the second part of the replace code. Okay, so now we're going to append again. We're going to close that, close that, and close it in the code. Okay, now technically that should do that part, okay? It should be able to tell the user that. Now we can go back and we can verify that, I think, already, in fact, uh, by loading in the package rules again. And then what it's going to do is allow us to take a look. Hold on. All right. Now, if we change it to replace words with another word and we say, like, let's change, like, let's do something that would be super unique, like a uh, big change or something like that. See how it has three boxes, too? I'm creating something that's super unique, um, the change text. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is look at the function uh, that we just had it right. Document.body.interHTML equals document.body.interHTML.replace. Then, look, it opened up the first set of uh, very, it, it opened up the replace, did a single quote, the item we're looking for, the string, ending the quote, the comma, second one, and that. And look, it grabbed the big change from the first one, and it grabbed the text we want to change to from the second one. So that's what we just did right here. We just hand wrote it so it will do that with every single thing the user wants to replace. Okay? We used the same two boxes that we've been using the whole time from the whole thing. So if this, instead of being an ID of an item now, equals the text they're looking for, and this equals the text they want to replace with. And that's what it's doing here. But the problem is the user doesn't really know that. So we have a little bit more to do, and we have to add, um, uh, in order to make that happen, we have to actually, actually have to add a new function in here uh, to handle that. So what we're going to do is just stay in the same header script area. But we're going to write a new function. And let's just call this new function, um, try to think. Uh, maybe let's just go with like selected value. And then let's just do SEL. We're going to take a parameter on this. It's going to be passed from our box. So let's just say get the 
users and selected value. This is actually going to be an on change event for that box, and we're going to go through that really fast too. So let's say something like uh, if, or no, I don't want to do that yet. I actually want to get a variable. I'm going to say, um, let's just say cell value, like the selected value. It's going to equal cell uh, options. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say out of that selected item, we want the cell dot, I'm going to say selected index. And then we want the selected, selected index's uh, value. Yeah, that'll do it. All right, so essentially what we just did there, I know it's going to be confusing uh, if, you don't, if you're not super familiar with JavaScript. But what we did there is the box that we're grabbing is a select option box. And so in JavaScript, we can actually grab that item because that's what we're going to pass that in on the onChange event. And it's getting its options, and then it's getting its selected index, and then it's saying I want the value of that selected index. That's what this code is doing right now. So it's going to give us whatever the, val the text value is. So if the user selected replace words with another word, that's what this is going to equal right here. Okay? But we need it on an on change event. That's why we're doing it different from what's above. So let's just say now, check for the on change and act accordingly. Yeah, all right. So here's what I mean by that. We're going to say if cell value equals equals, just like above, okay? If it equals replace with another word, just like this, then we want to change that box. Now remember, we changed the ID of, we actually added an ID to this label right here, right when this video started, so we can actually access it. Now we're gonna access it. So we're gonna say, as usual, document dot get element by ID. And what's the element name? Do you remember what we called it? If you don't, because I kinda don't, you can go back down and get it pretty easily. Right here, we change it to element ID or word, right? That's what says ID of element to modify. So that's the ID of that label. Back up, yeah. We can say that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say dot text content. Because remember, we're not changing the value or anything. We're changing what's actually inside of it. And we're going to say equals words or word, sorry, to be replaced. Look at that. Now the user is going to be informed. But what if they select a different item after this? Well, that's pretty easy too. We don't want those. We want the squig of this. All right. Now we're going to say here, change to let user know we want an item. And then down here, we're going to say, change to let the user know we want an ID. Now what we're doing here is we're actually creating a function that can be used for many different items as we go through this and we replace them. I actually need to close that. Okay. Meaning that this is actually a pretty good, um, this whole code we're setting up right here is actually good because we can use it for many things. So as we add more items, we can actually inform the user that maybe we want an ID, maybe we want something else in that first box other than an ID. So it kind of, it's cool. It opens up a lot of options for us. So what did it originally say? It originally said uh, ID of element to uh, modify. Is that what it says? Right here. Yep. Okay. So, okay. So here's what it's going to do. It's going to say if that past value uh, equals this string, I want you to change that label to say this, else change it back. But the problem is we're not actually calling this function from anywhere yet. We still have one more thing we need to do in order to put this together. I'm really surprised this is almost 10 minutes. I thought this was going to take a lot longer to show. Okay. And then down here on the drop down, okay, the select item itself, this is the actual HTML select item. We need to create an on change event. Okay. And this is basically going to track basically what it says if it's changed. Now remember, uh, actually, we should have grabbed the variable name from both. I mean the function name, sorry. Right here, selected value, just like that. And we're going to pass. I'll show you. It's pretty It's pretty uh, obvious, actually. Okay, there's the function we're calling. No, not like that. Like that. And what we're going to pass as a parameter to it, because it's taking a parameter, is this. So when we're calling cell in the add-on, but we're kind of calling SEL, remember, to get its option, all that, the reason it knows what it's referencing is because we're passing this. Okay, that means it's passing this whole item, this whole object, into that JavaScript. So it knows, okay, there's options, this is an option select, all that kind of stuff. So then it knows how to access what we're trying to tell it to do. Okay, barring anything unforeseen, we should be able to go back, and this stuff should work. So let's take a look. Let's just reload the package rules. All right, so when we say 
change replace words is another word. This should say, look at that, words to be replaced. Let's do something else. ID of element to modify. Replace words with another word. See, word to be replaced, new value to change to. Perfect. And by the way, if you guys want to change this text, all you have to do is give it an ID and then go to that same function and change its ID to change whatever its text content is. So let's just say word to be replaced is like, uh, what did I do before? Big change with three. You can do anything you want here, literally stars. I mean, you're creating a unique word to be identified. And let's just say the home depot. Okay, now we know that that's going to work. It's going to change anything. It says big change to the Home Depot. So let's save that setting. And then what we can do is go back to our front end, turn on the Themify Builder, which should work out pretty good for us. Then what we're going to do, well, it's taking them forever. All right, okay, what I'm going to do is go ahead and edit the page in the back. I don't know why it's taking so long. Okay, so what I'm going to do is add some line breaks here. Sorry, I wasn't talking. I was waiting for the thing to load. And then we're going to do our unique text identifier, just like that. And instead of big change, let's say, like, this is the new text. Okay, give us some spaces. Man, give us some space. Hit the save. And now what we should see on our front end, when I go back to it, it should save this. Okay, update the page. And then view the page. I cannot view the page yet. We need to wait for it to update. All right, perfect. Now we can view the page. All right. Now it should do it. Okay, so let's take a look at our Frankenstein creation here and see if it's working as it should be. Aha, look at that. So it says, this is the test headline. This is the new text, the Home Depot. Right, but that actually said big change. Okay, and it's being modified because of our new package rule. It's loaded again. Let's take a look at the package rule. We can edit it real time and I can show you it's working. All right, so the Home Depot, right? Let's change this to the Home Depot rules or the wood aisle smells good, whatever you want to say. They should bottle it into a cologne by this point. All right, let's take a look. Look at that. So we know now that it's working, okay? Now, why is this so valuable? Why is this so crazy? If it doesn't already make sense to you to why this is so obviously valuable, this is because, remember, when this thing works the way it's supposed to and we actually code all the rest of it, it's going to be able to take a unique identifier, traffic source, and keyword and be able to change the whole page accordingly. So it's the same advertising page, but you can change it to Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, you know, whatever you want uh, based on wherever you live. You know, there's like a million different hardware stores or whatever, but you can change it to whatever you want. And so you don't have to build multiple advertising pages. You can change everything from color schemes to words to that's what this is going to be. But one advertising page fits all. It's going to save a lot of time in your uh, building of advertising. That's what this is meant to do. All right, so let's just go ahead and do another one. Let's just say replace words, and let's just say something like more words, or let's just say something like more words. And then let's just do like a star on the front and a star on the back or something. What I'm trying to show you is that you can really make this whatever. I've got like two stars on the front and one on the back. And let's just change this to uh, buy our products. All right, there it is, okay? So there it is added in as a rule. Let's go ahead and copy this because we're going to go put it in our page. Save that package setting. Let's come back and make sure now it's editing multiple words on the same document. Okay, it's doing now multiples. So let's come back here. Let's come back in here. And let's say, uh, oh, I don't know. I need some line breaks in here. It always takes them away in the back end editor. That's why I don't like to use this editor. I don't know why the front's not working. Okay, let's do it with some more line breaks. I'm just doing it manually in the back right here. And then let's just say our products and then let's give it a space and then more words see i did that as the identifier okay done save you know the drill save 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 update and it's taking forever tonight for some reason i don't know why the editor is just the wordpress studio is just taking forever the back end you know i'm not sure why it's doing that all right so back here in the front let's go ahead and do a refresh i'm waiting for that little wheel to spin to let me know that it's doing it all right perfect now we're going to see some more text being replaced now we have two rules. Look at that. Okay, so now we have, this is the new text, the Home Depot rules. Then we have our products by our products. Those words are being replaced real time, both this set and this set. And on top of that, we can now add any other rules we want to this package. We can change the font. We can change the opacity. We can change the background color. And that's just of this one headline. Okay, now when you have uh, multiple headlines or when you have different div IDs for pictures, I mean, like, this thing's going to be awesome. Okay, I hope you can see where we're headed with it. Because that's really going to tie up this video over 20 minutes. Oh, my God. 
anyway, so let's just do a really fast recap. Uh, what we did was, up in the top, we added another uh, LSIF, so like stack it with the rest of them, right? Another LSIF uh, right here, which is for, or down here, sorry, for replacing the words with another word. And then we hand wrote another function, which is similar to our ones above. We just had to change it to document.bodyinner.html, that whole thing, and then the replacement we did. Then we added an event, or we added an on change event to uh, this drop down right here to change the font in here to say word to be replaced versus ID of elements modified. So the user knows when they say replace word, it says word to be replaced, and the new value changed to. So the user is informed that they can still use these two boxes. And uh, and then we made it write it out. And let's see. Beyond that, what else do we do? Oh, yeah, we had to give an ID to this in order to modify it. But overall, pretty simple, I think. I hope it was relatively easy to follow. I know that sometimes these videos get complicated when there's a lot to do in a short amount of time. Or it's like a really advanced topic I'm trying to squeeze down small. But ultimately, look, all we did was say the image HTML replace, which takes two parameters, which is the word you want to replace and what you want to replace it with. Now, when I say words, I mean like create unique identifiers in your advertising pages so that there's no way that it can ever possibly cross over with something that's like the name of a CSS file, the name of a, a JavaScript file, a function name. Don't do that. Instead, use extremely unique identifiers so that you can change your advertising pages to whatever you need. Okay, and it'll never ever cross over with anything else. And you can do this easily by creating a spreadsheet and then tracking like, okay, everything that says big change, I want to change to the new company name. You can map it out really easily in a spreadsheet and then say, this is what I want to be this, this is what I want to be this, and that way you don't lose track. Anyway, I think I'm going to wrap it up. And you know what? I didn't even tell you guys to subscribe at the beginning, did I? That's because it's like, I think it's like midnight for me right now. Uh, but hey, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, will you? It's free. You click a button. It costs you nothing. And it makes me smile. And I very much appreciate that because I like smiling. Uh, and I know you probably like smiling too, and that you I hope you are if you're watching this video. So anyway, hey, in the next video, we're going to continue right on down the line. I think we're going to go for probably change all href locations uh, or change designated href locations. We'll maybe give the user ability to change different links to different locations. Another advertising tr thing that's cool, you can send them down a different funnel if maybe they uh, come on through Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. So Hey, all right. Well, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one where we keep moving down this thing. I'm excited to finish all these so we can move on to some more fun stuff like actually making the traffic work and all that. But uh, it's for another time. I'll see you guys in the next one.